Hello again and welcome to our slightly less basic uh, Rook vs Pawn Endgames. In this example it's uh, black to move and it's a drawn position uh, because the uh, black king and black pawn are on the fifth rank looking to advance and uh, we're playing from the black perspective here. So uh, with the king, the white king so far away it's um, a one position. Now the technique when you're uh, playing the black side uh, in these end games is to get your king on the uh, same um, side as uh, the white king uh, on the same side of the, your pawn, uh, thus stopping the, uh, the black king from, from getting uh, close to your pawn and uh, managing to, to gang up on it with his rook. So the correct move here for black is to play king g3. Now you could play g3 first with the pawn and then move the king across, but it's um, it's better to play king g g3 because it, it plays through the correct technique first. Uh, so white plays uh, c5, um, trying to get his king close, otherwise there's uh, no chance. Then the king f2, uh, he's now got control of the uh, queening square, and it's looking to uh, match that pawn forward. So king d5, king g3, king g4, we can see that the uh, the king can't get close to the pawn. We have g2, and um, there's nothing the rook can do, he can try a check, but simply king g3, and... Uh, you know, there's, there's nothing black and uh, white can do here. It's got to take off on g2, king g2, and it's a draw. Uh, let's go back a few moves, and um, instead of playing this king uh, e4, what if um, the white rook came to a2 with a check? Well, the king can come to f3, rook to a3. Um, it's got to really, unless he's going to go back to a1. King to f2 and it's a repeat position. Um, the, the white player may try and get out of this by playing something like um, king uh, d3 but then g2 and again uh, the rook is forced to uh, take the pawn to stop it uh, promoting and it's a drawn end game. So like I say the, uh, the technique here is to get your uh, king on the uh, same side um, as, as the white king is attacking uh, and then to uh, uh, form some kind of a uh, shield um, to stop the, the, the white king getting involved in the end game forcing the uh, white rook to uh, uh, sacrifice or exchange itself off for the uh, black pawn and uh, leave a drawn position. Okay let's look at uh, another example um, of a rook versus pawn end game. Okay, to end our lessons, our po chess podcast on the uh, rook versus pawn basic end games, uh, we're going to give an illustrative example here, uh, and then we're going to go into stuff like the uh, Lucina position and the Philidor position, and uh, look at some variations of them, where they go right and where they go wrong. Um, like I said, these, these are the um, chess mentor program on chess.com. And uh, there's many more positions than the, uh, the few that I've shown you. Uh, so if you get a chance uh, to, uh, to, to get onto chess.com uh, and use that program, um, it's uh, an excellent training tool and uh, something I'm, uh, I'm sure will uh, uh, help your game and, and help you improve. So anyway, getting back to this position. Um, we're going to uh, bring in a few of the ideas that we've seen. Uh, the first idea uh, is the fact that it's white to move here, and um, you know if we ignore the um, the kind of white rook and the, the two black pawns, what would uh, white try and do here? Well, he would try and uh, push his pawn forward and get a queen, and, and then, then the rook would come off, and it would be a draw. And if that happened, then we would be left with just the rook and two pawns, uh, which is supported, but the king is far away. And, and that's uh, you know the answer really. If we um, uh, push our pawn forward, g7, uh, the rook is forced to take uh, on g7. We'll check. King takes, and now we have this kind of one position for white. Uh, e3, and then the rook comes e3, always attacking the, the most advanced of the uh, the two pawns. Uh, the king can come, but the king's too far away, and the white king can get to the action much quicker with king f6. Then there's king c7, uh, king f5, uh, king d7, and the rook comes down. Now put an extra pressure, uh, ganging up on the um, f4 pawn. Uh, it's forced to move to f3, but after rook e takes e3, 
f2 rook to f3, uh, we see that after the queen uh, appears on the board, it disappears off the board and whites won the position. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed these last two podcasts on um, rook and pawn end games. Uh, and like I said, they're kind of the forerunner giving the basic ideas to much harder positions uh, where both sides have uh, rooks on the board and there are the pawns and have the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh rank. And we're going to look at the, um, like I said, the Lucina position uh, in the next chess podcast, or uh, I may possibly do an open chess podcast before that. And then also the Philidor position. And these are the, the fundamentally like the two most important. Um, end games uh, you should know in rook pawn end games because uh, they're so illustrative and they give the um, the idea of uh, blocking out the the opposing king with your king uh, advancing uh, the the pawn uh, by getting your rook uh, behind your passive pawn. Um, and they're, they're, they're truly the kind of the end games you, you need to start learning if you're going to uh, improve in your uh, end game uh, technique. Well, thank you once again for uh, another um, uh, chess podcast, and uh, I look forward to uh, producing more in the next uh, few weeks.